Hello, everyone. Uh, now the. Talk up. Talk louder. Louder. <coughs> Is this loud enough? I'm a little deaf in this ear now. <coughs> you can hear me? All right. <coughs> can you hear me? A little louder. All right. All right. Uh, I'm here to talk about writing uh, resumes and cover letters. Now, with a with a cover letter, you want it to be about well one page, not about one page, one page. And uh, <clears throat> before writing it, you got to have uh, you got to do some research about the company and the position that you're applying for, so you can. Uh, customize the letter and tailor it to that position and company. You really don't want to have a generic uh, cover letter. Like you can't just send one cover letter to a bunch of different places. So you want to do your research and then uh, kind of tailor it to that um, position. Louder? Even louder. I thought I was yelling. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and in doing that research, you want to um, kind of maximize your connections with the people who work there. Because if you, if you know someone who works there and you can get a uh, sort of a, a referral type <laughs> thing, and uh, then you can mention that in the cover letter that you know this person. And you have to make sure that this person is someone that the person reading the cover letter would know. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless to mention them. Kind of you're name dropping someone who they don't know. <laughs> and now to, st to start the cover letter, you want to um, f find out what your um, position entails and the kind of um, that should be your first two lines where you um, address the company. And then after that, you start a narrative where you it should be a compliment to your resume where you kind of tell the story of your um, relevant work history and educational history to sort of flesh, flesh out an image of yourself as a person and a worker. Let's see. And don't uh, just repeat all the information from your resume because you're attaching it to your resume, so you don't really need all that information. It should be complimentary, again. Uh, and the last line should be um, when and where you plan on contacting them for like uh, a follow-up. And you want to request a meeting in that final line. That's pretty much your cover letter. Uh, and uh, for the cover letter, you want to use formal language. No uh, abbreviations or texting speak or anything like that. And you want to have it um, formatted like a regular paper, easy to read. No weird fonts, just uh, your basic Times New Roman, 12 point font. Just make it readable and easy to read. It's redundant. <laughs> yeah, ch -ch -ch -ch. Two of these. <laughs> hmm. so make sure to revise your cover letter, read through it. Make sure there's no typos or anything. You can go over it with someone else. They can A second pair of eyes can always help. You can bring it to the writing center. We can help you revise it. <coughs> and 
and that's about all you need for the cover letter. And uh, for a resume, it's sort of a different story because <laughs> that's where you're. Do you have a question? Yes. Cover letter? So, Sorry. Yes, cover letter. <laughs> so, cover letter is something that you do when you have a job, when you're going to apply to that job, you're going to work into the job. Is that correct? Or is it when you already, uh, when they call you for the job? Or well, that's where, when you're sub submitting a resume to, to them yeah. for selection. You want to have a cover letter on there. So, for example, I see a job that they hire right now. Mm -hmm. And I want to go apply to that job. Do I have to have a cover letter at that moment? Or do I have to wait when I apply and they call me? Yeah, just when you apply. It's... Uh, it's when I when I apply mm -hmm. or when I apply that they call me for the interview. When they call me for the interview, is that the time that I need to have the cover letter? Uh, no, you just need to, to have it when you uh, with the resume when you with send the it. Resume. Yes, with when you send it. In. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you wanna you wanna address that to the. Um, some jobs when you're going, you see it there, and you go to apply. Yes. They ask you for the resume right away. Yes. Other job, they just tell you, okay, fill out the application mm -hmm. here. They don't ask for the resume. Mm -hmm. They call you later, mm -hmm. and they ask you for the resume. Mm -hmm. And when they ask you for the resume, that's when you can bring it with the cover letter. Yes. They're the ones that tell you, oh, do you have the resume right away? Do I have to give them the cover letter? No, the cover letter is just more of a personal, uh, not really personal. Uh, it kind of complements the resume when you're sending it in alone. If you're there with the resume, you don't really need it. Speaking of, uh, so for the resume, it's, uh, it's similar to the cover letter in that you're trying to appeal to the p people who are doing the hiring. But it's uh, it's more of a uh, inventory of your work experience and your educational experience and any other skills you may have. Um, <coughs> and uh, similarly, you want to have it tailored to that position. You can't just uh, photocopy the same resume to a lot of different uh, jobs because some of your work experience might not be relevant to certain jobs. <coughs> so you want to uh, make sure you... Uh, put down the right jobs for the right application. <laughs> now there's uh, some resumes have objectives. Some people say you should have an objective. Some people say you shouldn't. If you're going to, you should make sure that it's specific. If you have a generic objective, it's not going to do much for you in the selection process. <laughs> Objectives where you uh, say what you want out of the job. <laughs> uh, can I add something? Excuse me, can I add something? Like yes. Uh, sometimes Please do. Also is the type of job you're applying for. I had a friend who applied to the college and she didn't have an objective in there and then they didn't know what she was applying for. Hmm. So an objective just would, would help that reader to say, oh, she wants this job and so on. So Yeah, it can it can help uh, sort of define what you're applying for really. 
Do, 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 do. Uh, hmm. All right. Now, when you, when you're uh, writing the resume, you want to have your uh, name and uh, personal information up at the top. Not not too personal, like uh, just have your address and uh, stuff. <laughs> Um, then it, sh it should be ordered by importance. Then you should have your uh, work experience in chronological order, starting with the, the present and going back. And then uh, education, somewhere near the bottom. And uh, when you're putting down skills, or, or, or when you're putting down stuff you did at the old jobs, you should use um, action verbs or active verbs, which uh, say stuff that you did rather than stuff you were assigned to do. Like, I was in charge of this. You should say, I, um, administrated something. It should be active. Yes? What about if you have work before and then you don't have any job information and I work there before? Just for um, jobs that you. Yeah, like you know where you're supposed to like, I my past job like where I used to work, mm -hmm. and then if you never worked before, it's your first time applying for a job. Hmm. What do you put in that space? Uh, you should tr you should try to um. <laughs> think of uh, skills that you've had in, just non-professional areas. Just skills that you, you you've developed that could help you in this job. Like if you're, like if, if you're a good typist, or if you've if you've volunteered anywhere, or if you've um, if in school you were a member of any associations that could be relevant to this job, you can put those down. Yes. Can I put like um see I I work at the church. Church. I don't work for but I go to the church and I have um twenty five kids, can I put that as a public service? Um like the teacher of the twenty five kids, can I put that to the resident? Uh sure if the, if it's relevant to the job. Yeah, that's if you're relevant, yeah, well like if you're doing for a for buying for like a baker or a school or something like that. Mm hmm And you'd wanna you wanna um say the responsibilities and stuff. So that um, you can kind of show your skills as a um, as a worker. All right. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And again, uh, revise your resume as well. Go through it. Make sure. Um, Everything's up to date and accurate. You don't want uh, inaccurate dates or anything on there. So you can run into problems with that. <coughs> and like with the cover letter, you want to have um, a normal font. Just uh, Times New Roman's usually good. Uh, 12 point, keep it about one page if you're relatively inexperienced. Uh, two pages if you're like a PhD or something and you have a lot, a lot of experience. But for someone really young, you want to keep about one page. <laughs> oh, um, with resumes, uh, a lot of them are put into computer systems where um, the employers can actually search through them with uh, certain keywords. So you want to um, research the company and see, uh, see if you can find some of those uh, keywords that might be able to help you in a, 
in a search that they run. Because <laughs> that could, like having the wrong words in there can kind of eliminate you from selection. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> And uh, keep your resume updated. Anything new that happens, you should uh, put that in there. Should we keep hmm. updated like once a month? Like uh, what? Should we keep updating our resume like once a month or whatever? Well, if something new happens to you every month, then no, things don't happen to me once a month. All right. Uh, and you can, uh, you can bring either resumes or uh, cover letters to the writing centers. We do all sorts of professional uh, writing, not just essays and stuff. Yeah, we can, uh, we can help you revise, we can help you pre-write, we can help you just go through the thing and write it. And, uh, yeah. Any questions? Questions? Comments? All right. <laughs>